Uh, as you know, they've announced uh, a few days ago that they're going to move a lot of their manufacturing business to Mexico. I'm just uh, notifying John Deere right now. If you do that, we're putting a 200% tariff on everything that you want to sell into the United States. John Deere, the titan of American agriculture, is now facing its biggest crisis yet. With controversial moves like outsourcing jobs to Mexico and enforcing strict repair controls that limit farmers' independence, the company has sparked outrage across the farming community. What was once a trusted name in American fields is now accused of putting profits before people, leaving farmers and workers questioning their loyalty to the iconic brand. As John Deere's decisions ripple through rural America. A battle brews over the future of farming and the rights of those who feed the nation. But what exactly did John Deere do to get into such deep trouble? John Deere's move to Mexico, a betrayal of American workers. The shockwaves from John Deere's latest decision are reverberating across the U.S. farming and manufacturing sectors, leaving communities in disbelief. John Deere, a name that once symbolized American agricultural pride, has decided to shift production of key equipment lines, like skid steers and compact track loaders, to Mexico. The company is planning to transition these operations away from their long-standing manufacturing facilities in Iowa and Illinois, dealing a severe blow to American workers and their communities. But why the sudden change? And why now? The answer lies in labor costs. Mexico offers significantly lower wages than the U.S., and John Deere stands to slash manufacturing expenses and dramatically increase its profits. For instance, while American production managers often earn upwards of $56 per hour, their Mexican counterparts make roughly $44 per hour, a difference that adds up quickly for a company of John Deere's size. It's a cold, calculated business move, but one that's left thousands of American workers questioning the company's loyalty to its own country. In September 2023 alone, John Deere laid off more than 2,000 employees across its Iowa and Illinois facilities, with plans for even more cuts in 2024 as the relocation progresses. These layoffs have impacted not just factory workers, but also entire local economies built around John Deere's presence. For decades, families and businesses in these small towns have relied on the company's manufacturing jobs to sustain their livelihoods. But now they're left wondering, is John Deere even interested in supporting American workers anymore. But job relocation isn't the only reason people are furious with John Deere. The company's actions over the past few years have revealed a pattern that many argue prioritizes profits over the people who keep the company running. And now, with the move to Mexico on the horizon, critics are calling for action to hold the company accountable. Could this be the beginning of the end for John Deere's reputation as a symbol of American agriculture? The layoffs economic ripple effect. For the thousands of John Deere workers facing layoffs, the impact is not just about losing a paycheck. It's about watching their communities crumble around them. Many of these workers live in small towns where the local economy revolves around the company. Local businesses depend on John Deere's employees to keep their doors open, and these layoffs are expected to send shockwaves through these fragile economies. Take the town of Dubuque, Iowa, for example, where a John Deere facility has been an economic anchor for years. The company recently announced that this plant, along with others across the Midwest, would be scaling back operations as part of the move to Mexico. In these small communities, when a company like John Deere pulls out, it's not just a factory that closes. Entire neighborhoods feel the impact. Property values drop, local businesses close, and families are forced to relocate to find work, effectively hollowing out the communities that helped build the company. And what's even more frustrating for workers and their communities is that John Deere is citing declining sales as the reason for these cuts, pointing to a reported 20% drop in product demand. Yet the company has been raking in record profits during this same period. Many former employees and industry insiders argue that John Deere's profit motives are driving these layoffs, not genuine financial necessity. Critics accuse the company of using declining sales as a smokescreen to justify slashing costs and boosting profits for shareholders. One former employee who had worked at John Deere's Moline, Illinois plant for over 20 years described the situation as a slap in the face. According to him, we were told we were like family, that John Deere was committed to American workers. Now they're taking away our jobs and leaving us with nothing. It's like they care more about their bottom line than the people who built this company. Stories like his aren't hard to find, and they're fueling a growing backlash against the company. But the question remains, will this backlash be enough to change John Deere's course? 
Political pressure mounts. The response from political leaders has been swift and intense, with high-profile figures like Donald Trump and Senator Elizabeth Warren adding fuel to the fire. During a recent policy roundtable in Pennsylvania, Trump issued a dramatic warning to John Deere. If they proceed with the relocation to Mexico, he'll impose a 200% tariff on their products, making them nearly unaffordable for American farmers. In Trump's own words, if John Deere wants to abandon American workers, they'll pay the price. Such a tariff could be devastating, especially in an agricultural industry already struggling with rising costs and thin margins. A tractor that normally costs $100,000 could skyrocket to $300,000, potentially pricing out the very farmers who rely on John Deere's products to keep their farms running. Senator Warren, meanwhile, has been vocal about her concerns over John Deere's growing monopoly on repair services. She argues that the company's recent software policies, which prevent farmers from making repairs on their own equipment, are hurting small farms and eroding farmers' autonomy. By restricting access to essential repair tools and data, John Deere has effectively created a captive market where farmers have no choice but to pay for expensive authorized repairs. Warren's sharp critique underscores a larger issue. By prioritizing profit over people, John Deere is not only hurting its workers, but also damaging the livelihoods of its customers, the very farmers who depend on their equipment to make a living. Trump's tariff threat and Warren's criticism have thrown John Deere into the political spotlight, making the company a flashpoint in the debate over corporate responsibility. Supporters of Trump's proposed tariff argue that it's necessary to protect American jobs and prevent other companies from following in John Deere's footsteps. On the other hand, critics like billionaire entrepreneur Mark Cuban have warned that such tariffs could harm American consumers by driving up costs and unintentionally benefiting foreign competitors. Cuban has even described Trump's strategy as insane, arguing that it won't address the underlying issues of outsourcing and could backfire by making foreign agricultural equipment more competitive in the US market. But this political battle is far from over. With Trump, Warren, and others weighing in, John Deere now finds itself in a tight spot, caught between its pursuit of profit and mounting pressure to uphold its commitment to American workers. As the stakes rise, all eyes are on the company to see how it will respond. Will John Deere back down and keep production in the US, or will it risk facing severe political and economic consequences? The right to repair debate intensifies. As if the layoffs and outsourcing weren't enough, John Deere has recently sparked outrage in another area, farmers' ability to repair their own equipment. For years, John Deere's machines were known for their reliability and ease of repair, making them a favorite among American farmers. But with the advent of new technology, the company has introduced software locks on its machinery, preventing farmers from conducting their own repairs. Now, when something breaks, farmers are forced to rely solely on John John Deere's authorized dealers, often at a premium price. For farmers, this policy is more than just an inconvenience. It's a direct attack on their independence. Many farmers have been vocal about their frustrations, describing scenarios where they've had to wait days, even weeks, for authorized technicians to make simple repairs, time that can be catastrophic during critical planting or harvesting periods. One farmer shared a story about losing two and a half days of productivity because of a computer issue with his tractor. He had no choice but to wait for an authorized dealer to resolve the problem, costing him precious time and income. This restrictive policy has only intensified the backlash against John Deere, and it's fueling a growing movement known as Right to Repair. Farmers and their advocates are pushing for laws that would require companies like John Deere to provide access to the tools, data, and software needed to repair their own equipment. In states like Colorado, these efforts are gaining traction, with new legislation aimed at dismantling the barriers that companies like John Deere have set up. The fight for the right to repair goes beyond just farming. It's part of a larger battle for consumer rights in a world where companies are increasingly locking down their products with proprietary technology. For many farmers, this issue is deeply personal, a struggle to maintain control over the tools that allow them to make a living. And as this debate continues, it's becoming clear that the stakes are high, not just for John Deere, but for the entire agricultural industry. So how will this battle unfold? And what could it mean for the future of farming in America? 
the fallout from John Deere's repair restrictions. John Deere's move to restrict independent repairs is sparking intense backlash across the agricultural community. Imagine this, a farmer purchases a state-of-the-art tractor only to find that when it breaks down, he can't repair it himself. Instead, he's forced to take it to a John Deere authorized dealer where repair costs are steep and wait times are long. For many farmers, this dependence on John Deere approved service centers is more than a minor inconvenience. It's a direct hit to their independence and their wallets. The company has effectively monopolized repairs, locking farmers out from accessing even basic diagnostic information on their own equipment. Why would a company restrict its customers from servicing the very products they rely on? The answer, critics say, lies in profit. John Deere's parts and services division is reportedly between three to six times more profitable than their equipment sales. And by controlling repairs, they can maintain these lucrative profit margins. But this policy is pushing farmers to their breaking point. Imagine trying to harvest your crop during a narrow window of good weather, only to have your equipment break down and face a costly delay while waiting for a technician. This situation has led to a nationwide push for right to repair legislation. Farmers argue that they should be able to access the tools, software, and manuals necessary to fix their own equipment, rather than being at the mercy of John Deere's repair monopoly. The frustration is palpable, and it's not just among individual farmers. Many consumer rights groups and lawmakers are also pushing for change. The question remains, how long can John Deere maintain this policy before the pressure forces them to open up access to repairs? Hacking tractors for freedom. In response to John Deere's restrictive repair policies, some farmers and independent mechanics have taken matters into their own hands. Farmers across the country are seeking unconventional methods to bypass John Deere's software locks, and one method that's gained traction is hacking. This movement isn't about causing harm or sabotage, it's about farmers reclaiming control over their own equipment. One of the most high-profile demonstrations of this defiance took place at the DEFCON hacking conference, where a security researcher known as Sick Codes showcased a way to bypass John Deere software locks. The demonstration was groundbreaking, providing farmers with a way to regain control over their machinery. This jailbreak, as it's called, gives farmers the ability to perform their own repairs without waiting for John Deere's approval. Sick Codes' actions highlight the lengths farmers are willing to go to fight for their independence in an era where corporations increasingly control how consumers use their products. But John Deere has been quick to crack down on on these unauthorized repairs, claiming that they could void warranties or even damage the equipment. While John Deere's legal team argues that hacking could compromise safety and emission standards, many farmers counter that they should be free to decide how to maintain their own property. After all, if a piece of equipment is purchased outright, shouldn't the owner have the right to repair it? It's a contentious issue that's dividing opinion, but for many, this fight is as much about principle as it is about practicality. And the pushback from farmers and hackers alike is gaining momentum forcing John Deere into an uncomfortable position. As more farmers seek ways to bypass software restrictions, John Deere may be left with no choice but to relax its repair policies. But will the company make this change willingly, or will it be forced by legislation? The answer to that question could shape the future of farm equipment for years to come. The battle for right to repair in U.S. courts. As tensions rise, the battle over right to repair has moved from the fields to the courts. Several lawsuits have been filed against John Deere, accusing the company of monopolistic practices and stifling consumer rights. One landmark case, Forest River Farms vs. Deere and Company, has garnered national attention. This North Dakota farm is suing John Deere, claiming the company has created an unlawful monopoly on repairs and is exploiting farmers who have no alternative but to use Deere authorized services. This lawsuit argues that John Deere's restrictions violate antitrust laws by creating a closed market for repair services. If successful, this case could set a powerful precedent, forcing companies across multiple industries to reconsider their restrictive repair policies. The stakes are incredibly high. A victory for Forest River Farms could empower consumers across the nation and dismantle John Deere's tight grip on repair services. But the case is complex and John Deere's legal team is fighting back, arguing that these restrictions are necessary for safety and environmental compliance. In parallel with legal battles, several states have also taken steps toward enacting right-to-repair legislation. 
Colorado, for example, recently passed a law requiring agricultural equipment manufacturers to provide farmers with the necessary tools and information to make their own repairs. This law is a major victory for farmers, but it didn't come easily. John Deere and other manufacturers lobbied heavily against it, warning that such laws could compromise safety and emission standards. Despite the pushback from corporate lobbyists, the right to repair movement is gaining momentum, and more states are considering similar legislation. Industry experts are watching closely, as this wave of legislation could fundamentally alter the way companies approach repair services. Will John Deere adapt to this changing landscape, or will they dig in their heels and continue to fight for control over their repair market? The answer to that question could impact not only the agricultural sector, but also set a precedent for other industries facing similar right to repair debates. But the battle isn't over yet. As more cases head to court and more states consider passing right to repair laws, John Deere's monopoly on repairs could be on the verge of collapse. The outcome of these legal and legislative battles will determine whether farmers can finally reclaim their right to repair their own equipment or whether John Deere will continue to hold the reins. What lies ahead for John Deere in this rapidly evolving landscape? John Deere's record profits amidst layoffs, a tale of corporate greed, as layoffs sweep through John Deere's US workforce, there's one question on everyone's mind. Why would a company with record profits slash thousands of jobs? In 2023, John Deere announced profits of over $10 billion, a whopping 42% increase from the previous year. Despite this financial success, they still chose to lay off more than 1,500 workers across Iowa and Illinois, citing economic challenges as the primary reason. Critics argue that John Deere's decision to downsize during a time of record profits reveals a troubling disconnect between corporate priorities and the well-being of employees. The United Auto Workers, UAW, has been vocal about its disapproval, calling the layoffs an insult to working class people. For many, John Deere's success is overshadowed by its disregard for the workforce that helped build the company into the powerhouse it is today. The UAW argues that John Deere's decision to outsource jobs and cut workers isn't about economic necessity, it's about corporate greed. The timing of these layoffs has raised eyebrows, especially when combined with the massive compensation package awarded to John Deere's CEO, John May. In 2023, May's compensation shot up to an astonishing $26.7 million compared to $20.3 million the previous year. This executive windfall, occurring simultaneously with large-scale layoffs, has fueled accusations that John Deere prioritizes shareholder and executive interest over employee welfare. How does John Deere justify such lavish executive pay while cutting jobs? Supporters argue that high executive compensation is necessary to retain top talent, but for many workers, this reasoning rings hollow. It's hard to see how a company's profits can soar to record highs while its workers are left struggling to make ends meet. Could this growing income gap between executives and employees be the beginning of a major shift in how American companies treat their workforce? The controversy surrounding stock buybacks while John Deere has been laying off workers and moving production to Mexico, the company has also been pouring billions of dollars into stock buybacks. In 2023 alone, John Deere spent over $7 billion repurchasing its own shares, a strategy that benefits shareholders by driving up the stock price. But critics argue that these funds could have been used to support American workers, improve repair policies, or even lower the cost of equipment for struggling farmers. Instead, John Deere has chosen to prioritize short-term gains for its shareholders. Stock buybacks are a hotly debated topic in corporate America. On one hand, they can increase shareholder value and provide a financial cushion for the company. But on the other hand, they often come at the expense of employees and long-term investments. John Deere's choice to focus on buybacks while cutting jobs and outsourcing production sends a clear message. The company is prioritizing financial returns over the well-being of its workforce and customers. For many, this approach feels like a betrayal, especially considering John Deere's reputation as an American icon. The UAW and other labor advocates argue that John Deere's focus on buybacks is part of a broader trend of corporate greed in the U.S. By directing profits toward shareholders rather than reinvesting in their workforce, companies like John Deere risk eroding employee morale and loyalty. These buybacks don't just affect the workers who lost their jobs, they also impact local economies as the layoffs have a ripple effect on small businesses and communities that rely on these jobs for stability. 
But John Deere isn't alone in this approach. Many large corporations use stock buybacks as a way to boost earnings per share and keep investors happy. This trend has sparked debate over whether buybacks should be limited or taxed to encourage companies to reinvest in their workforce and communities. As John Deere faces mounting criticism over its financial choices, the company may soon find itself at a crossroads. Will it continue prioritizing shareholders or will it recognize the long-term costs of neglecting its employees? The Impact on Small Farmers and Rural Economies John Deere's recent decisions aren't just affecting factory workers, they're also hitting small farmers and rural economies hard. For many farmers, John Deere equipment is essential for day-to-day -day operations, but the company's repair restrictions and high equipment costs have become a growing burden. With software locked tractors and expensive authorized repair services, farmers are finding it increasingly difficult to maintain their machinery without breaking the bank. The financial strain doesn't stop there. The rising cost of farming equipment combined with John Deere restrictive repair policies has left many small farmers teetering on the edge of financial instability. According to estimates from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, farm income could drop by as much as 25% this year due to escalating operational costs and limited access to affordable repair options. This financial pressure is particularly hard on smaller family-owned farms that operate on thin profit margins and can't absorb these additional costs as easily as larger operations. For rural communities that depend on small farms, these financial struggles are a serious threat to local economies. When farmers can't afford to maintain their equipment, they're less able to produce crops, which affects the entire food supply chain. Small farms often play a critical role in supporting local businesses, from feed stores to equipment suppliers, and when they struggle, the whole community feels the impact. John Deere's repair restrictions don't just create frustration for farmers, they create economic ripples that are felt in rural communities across the country. Many farmers are now questioning whether John Deere truly cares about its customers. They argue that by enforcing restrictive repair policies and driving up equipment costs, the company is putting profits over people. Some have even begun turning to alternative brands or seeking out secondhand equipment to avoid the financial burden of new John Deere machinery. But as more farmers voice their frustrations, one thing is clear, John Deere's reputation in rural America is at stake. How will John Deere respond to the mounting criticism from its customers and the communities it once served? The answer could determine whether the company remains a trusted name in American agriculture or becomes another example of corporate greed gone too far. The Right to Repair Movement, a growing call for change. Across America, farmers are uniting in the right to repair movement, pushing back against corporations like John Deere that limit access to essential repair information. For farmers, the stakes are high. If they can't repair their own equipment, they risk losing precious time and income, especially during critical seasons. Imagine being unable to harvest your crops because your tractor has a minor software issue that only a John Deere technician can fix. For many, this loss of control over their own equipment feels like a violation of their rights. The right to repair movement advocates for laws requiring companies to make repair information, tools, and parts available to customers. Farmers argue that they should be able to repair equipment they've paid for without relying on expensive, time-consuming authorized services. This movement has gained significant traction, with several states considering legislation that would make it easier for farmers to repair their own machinery. Colorado, for instance, recently passed a law forcing agricultural equipment manufacturers to provide the tools and information needed for repair. Yet John Deere and other manufacturers have strongly resisted these changes, claiming that allowing unauthorized repairs could compromise safety and environmental standards. While there may be some merit to these concerns, many see it as an attempt to protect lucrative repair monopolies rather than a genuine concern for safety. As right to repair advocates continue to push for more comprehensive laws, John Deere faces mounting pressure to change its stance. Will the company respond to this call for reform, or will it continue to prioritize profits over its customers' rights? The Backlash from Loyal Customers John Deere's repair policies and outsourcing decisions have struck a nerve, especially among loyal customers who have used the brand for generations. For many farmers, John Deere equipment is more than just machinery. It's part of their family history and a symbol of American farming. But recent actions by the company have left many longtime customers feeling disillusioned and betrayed. Farmers who once swore by John Deere are now questioning whether the company still deserves their loyalty. Some customers are taking drastic measures to express their dissatisfaction. 
Stories are emerging of farmers abandoning John Deere in favor of competitors like Kubota and New Holland, brands that don't impose such restrictive repair policies. Others are turning to used equipment markets, opting for older, pre-software models that they can repair themselves. This shift marks a significant change in the farming community where brand loyalty once ran deep. The impact of this backlash extends beyond John Deere's reputation. It's affecting their bottom line. With more farmers exploring alternatives, the company risks losing a significant portion of its customer base. Some analysts warn that if John Deere doesn't address the concerns of its loyal customers, it could face long-term consequences as more farmers turn to brands that respect their right to repair. As this movement gains momentum, John Deere faces a crucial decision. Will it listen to its customers and change its ways, or will it risk becoming a cautionary tale of corporate disregard for consumer needs. The future of John Deere and American farming. The controversy surrounding John Deere's recent decisions has raised important questions about the future of American farming. As technology continues to transform agriculture, the balance between innovation and accessibility has become increasingly complex. While advanced equipment can boost efficiency, it also introduces new challenges, especially when corporations control access to repairs and maintenance. For many, John Deere's actions symbolize a broader issue in modern agriculture, the struggle between corporate interests and farmers' rights. If John Deere doesn't adjust its approach, it risks alienating the very customers who helped build its brand. The company could face further backlash not only from farmers, but also from lawmakers and consumers who are concerned about the impact of corporate monopolies on essential industries. As more states pass right to repair laws, John Deere will be forced to adapt to a landscape where consumers have greater control over their own products. This shift could reshape the agricultural equipment industry, setting a precedent for how companies balance profitability with customer rights. Yet, the path forward remains uncertain. Will John Deere embrace these changes and work with farmers to create a more transparent, fair repair process? Or will it double down on its current practices, risking further backlash and potential legislative action? The choices John Deere makes in the coming years will not only define its future, but also shape the agricultural industry as a whole. Farmers are watching closely, and they're ready to stand up for their rights, whether or not John Deere is prepared to listen. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the controversies surrounding John Deere. With right to repair legislation gaining momentum and a rising tide of customer backlash, John Deere's decisions are setting the stage for a major shift in the agricultural world. Will they listen to their customers and keep jobs in the US? Or will they continue down a path that prioritizes profits over people? If you want to stay updated on stories like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss a thing. Leave a comment below and let us know. Do you think John Deere should change its repair policies and keep production in the US? Thanks for watching watching and we'll see you in the next video.